Hi, and happy International Women's Day. My name is Gigi Gordon. I'm the comms and creative manager at A New Normal, and I'm joined by our fabulous founder and glorious leader, Trish Driver. <laughs> Trish, uh... <laughs> Trish, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what we do? I just, you know, how much I love you calling me the glorious leader. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, my name is Trish Driver. I founded A New Normal four years ago. Um, after having spent 20 odd years working in and for various different corporates um, and I guess our mission is really to support our clients in creating and sustaining really inclusive working environments. Fabulous, thank you and for International Women's Day we were hoping to talk about it from an intersectionality angle for everybody and I was wondering could you tell us what exactly intersectionality is? So the term intersectionality was coined by an incredible, incredible woman called Kimberly Crenshaw um, over 30 years ago. Um, and she talks about it from the perspective of, I guess, uh, where it first came to her was um, she was looking at cases of discrimination that involved black women in the United States. And I guess the realization dawned on her that actually they weren't being discriminated against solely on the basis of their race and they weren't being discriminated against solely on the basis of their gender. It was this I suppose collision she refers to it as in between the two at the intersection of those two I guess components of their identity. When we're talking about intersectionality from the perspective of the work that we do in the inclusion space I guess the simplest way of thinking about it is that none of us is made up of only one thing so we're not only identified by our gender or by our race or by our religious beliefs or by our socioeconomic background, we're all made up of a blend of all of these different things. And that can have more positive impact or more negative impacts, depending on who you are and the particular intersection that you're at. Thank you so much for that. And I was wondering, how do you think intersectionality plays into International Women's Day? So I think it's really important to think about um, intersectionality on International Women's Day in particular. Um, because I think there can be a tendency, you know, we're, we're all human beings and I suppose we talk a lot in the work that we do about bias and really bias is inherently kind of those shortcuts that we take. And one of the shortcuts is that we can tend to assume that our experience of life is exactly the same as everybody else's. And I think it's particularly important when we're talking about something like International Women's Day to really recognise that every woman's experience is different and women are very different from one another and if we're talking about celebrating women on International Women's Day then I guess the, the most important point really is to think about not excluding any particular types of women and there are some branches of feminism which are very exclusionary in their approaches and I think from our, our perspective we would always say it's really important to think about intersectionality and making sure that if we're celebrating women and we're really celebrating women then we celebrate all women on yeah. International Women's Day. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I think there are there are some groups that are often excluded and some groups which are always included as you know as is our, our line of work. But I think it's it's so important on a day like today to remember that trans women, black women, gay women, all of the different kinds of women also need to be celebrated and yeah, and, and loved. <laughs> I think that's that's the main thing um, for me. Um, and then also from an allyship angle, I was wondering how do you think what role do you think that plays within the feminism movement and how is that relevant to you know International Women's Day? Yeah I should say when I'm talking about um, feminism I I'm not talking about it from a kind of you know theoretical perspective I'm talking about it from kind of my own beliefs around what feminism really means and from from my perspective um, intersectional feminism is the only kind of feminism yeah. um, and I know that a few international women's days ago when I was a little bit more naive about the world of Twitter um, ended up getting a, a real um, I guess enlightening experience of how some people don't really share my view that you know feminism isn't really feminism unless it includes everybody um, <clears throat> so from an allyship perspective I think you know we talk a lot about power and privilege um, in the work that we do and 
I think people find both of those terms really quite emotive. Mm-hmm. Um, from a power perspective, I suppose we're talking about people who have, um, this is a phrase that one of our clients used in a workshop, which I absolutely love. So I'm just borrowing it with pride. People who have more capital in the bank, either within an organization or within society. So um, traditionally the more powerful groups in society, which are people who are male or straight or white or middle-class, um, I think just kind of recognizing where some of those power elements come into play. If you are in one of those more powerful groups, you're much more likely to have less challenge in your life than, for example, um, people who are part of the LGBT plus community or women or black women in particular, or people who have some kind of a disability. And I think it's really important to remember that if you have that power or that privilege, then you also have an amazing opportunity to be an incredible ally for other people who may not have as much capital in the bank as you. So when when it comes to International Women's Day, when it comes to feminism, um, I always kind of say to people, I've got two daughters and a son and I'm raising them all to be feminists because I think it's really important that we all take responsibility for this. Um, And I think it's important that we all recognize that from an allyship perspective, we all have things that we can contribute. So when we're talking about allyship in the workplace, for example, um, we have lots of conversations around banter in the workplace and what is and isn't okay. And people feeling comfortable to call things out or not call things out. And um, I would always say, if you're someone who feels like you're being directly impacted by a comment that's been made in the workplace or, or anywhere, it's much, much harder to call that out than it is if you're in one of those more powerful groups. So if you are tuned into what makes other people feel uncomfortable and you recognize that that's happening around you, then please feel free to act on behalf of other people and kind of you know step in and say, I'm sorry, I don't think that was okay. And that's, you know, when we talk about allyship, I think that privilege idea of having a bit more power and a bit more capital in the bank and being able to use that for good is really, really important. Absolutely. And I think allyship is such an important part of the diversity inclusion conversation, because when you see the main people who are trying to change these things are the people from those groups. I think even if you look around at a lot of diversity and inclusion consultancies, it's often people who have been negatively affected by those things in their lives and they want to go and help others. But actually, as you say, when you're in those positions, when, when you are in the workplace and you face discrimination, often the person who faces it is the person with the least power to do something about it. So it's so important for everybody to play a part in making their workplace more inclusive. And I also just wanted to note on the the privilege angle that this is definitely something I've learned in recent years that it's so important for every single person to acknowledge the privilege that they have, that even if you're from, you know, for for me personally, I'm I'm a mixed race woman. I used to just see that as my um, I guess the, the the biggest part of my experience when actually my accent that definitely offers me an amount of privilege being a light-skinned woman that offers me an amount of, of privilege or not having a disability it means that I have capital in the bank and I think that's a really really important thing to acknowledge so that it doesn't become I think I, I heard one of my friends use this phrase a while ago was the the oppression olympics is what she used to call it that <laughs> A lot of people coming together to be like, oh, no, I'm more oppressed. I'm more oppressed. And I, as much as it's so important to acknowledge all of those things, I do think it's really, really important as we move forwards with diversity and inclusion for people to be able to see their own privilege so that they can help others. Sometimes we get a little bit blinded by, you know, almost that thing of I love that. I love that term, the oppression Olympics. But I think, you know, it can feel really difficult to acknowledge that we have privilege of some kind and I think because it because it is such a loaded term it can feel quite accusatory um and I think we all you know sometimes there's almost a tendency for people to go into like this oppression olympics and kind of say well you know yes I may be this but I'm also xyz and I think it's really important just to kind of take a step out of ourselves and recognize that nobody's saying that your life has been perfect all the way through if you happen to have an amount of privilege because of your race or because of your upbringing or because of your gender but what they're saying is that those things are not something that will have caused you a challenge and I guess the flip side of it and the way that we would really encourage people to see it is that all of those things those privileges that you have give you an opportunity to do something really special in supporting and being a great ally for others as well. Absolutely and I think that that, I think that's a real mindset thing to see it as so much more of a positive and a wonderful thing that you can do rather than like something you should be ashamed of I think a lot of people have some shame surrounding privilege and their 
willingness to admit that and it's I you know that's what we do at a new normal we just want everybody to feel you know comfortable and welcome and um I guess invited to, to these conversations and just feel like that they've got a real stake to make a difference wherever they may be yeah. and I was just wondering what, what are some things that you think we could all do to be a little bit more inclusive in our everyday lives coming back to that idea of privilege I guess you know that recognition that everybody's experiences are completely different and just starting to maybe give ourselves the opportunity to broaden our horizons a bit and see how other people's experiences might be is a really helpful thing um I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the woman who does this video but there's a great woman who does this video about allyship and she says the allies are the backup singers in a group like the the backup singers would be uh which one Michelle in Destiny's Child um so I think making sure that you're kind of thinking about your allyship in a way that's kind of not obtrusive to other people is really really important and um, we will find the video and we'll put a link to it with this as well um but I, I, I like that idea because it's kind of, it shows that there is, you know, there's a responsibility from a support perspective for all of us when it comes to being more inclusive. So thinking about how we can broaden out our understanding of other people's experiences in a way that doesn't intrude on those people, I think is really important. Um, so I think, you know, there are so many ills of social media, but actually one of the really great things about social media is that it's a platform where people can share their perspectives on their own terms in the way that feels most authentic to them. So one of the things that we would say is the really easy way of being able to broaden out your own perspectives is just go and follow a bunch of different people on social media, consume different types of programs, watch something different, make a different choice about a film that you watch in the evening. Um, because what that gives you the ability to do is just to start having those little nudges where you can kind of look at a situation and think about it from somebody else's perspective and really, that's one of the most inclusive things that you can do, whether you're at work or somewhere else. And I think another thing is that a phrase we heard thrown out around a lot in 2020 that I think still applies today is educate yourself. And I think it's really, really important to take that burden from the people um, who are in these traditionally less powerful groups. It's not their you know responsibility to educate you on the topics in their life it's everybody has an individual responsibility to try and understand as much as they can about the different groups so for me for instance I have an individual responsibility to learn more about trans women and disabled people because that those are groups that I don't have a direct link to or connection with and it's not the, the responsibility of trans women or disabled people to educate me on that that's that's my responsibility which is why we built in our um, an educate yourself section on our website site where you can actually it, it's a fantastic resource I can't I can't big it up enough but you can just go in there and pick a topic and pick how much time you have click educate yourself and and a whole bunch of articles and videos and books will come up to help you learn a little bit more about an area that you might be lacking knowledge in so I think that's my my biggest um, tip is to just take that time to educate yourself and not wait around for people to educate you but Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation and we hope you enjoyed this video um, and yeah have a good rest of your day um, you Trish and anybody who's watching. Thank you and happy intersectional women's day to everybody else as well. Yes <laughs> happy intersectional women's day I love that.